On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're exposing a secret weapon for remastering your archives. Well, am I ever excited about today's session? You know, over the last number of months, I've been sharing some production techniques by digging into the archives, going back and, and, and looking into some of these tracks that I mixed 10 plus years ago and recalling them basically and, and sort of having a revisit to these tracks. Well, no question, this practice that I've been getting up to has led to a very, very important discovery that absolutely has to be shared. This is so important. Some of you are gonna benefit from this positively. You know, I've always sort of felt like if I went back into that old TDM system and I was able to recall and restore a session to a T and then bring all of that into my new Pro Tools system, there's just always been a thought in my mind that certainly that has to sound better. You know, the advancements that we've made in the audio interface in the last 15 years is just sort of unreal, right? So I always sort of felt like the practice of kind of recalling one of those old mixes would improve the sound a bit. Yeah. I am happy to report that every single one of these songs that I've accurately recalled and restored from the old TDM rig and brought into my new system, they don't sound a little bit better. They sound way better. I'm talking like 25 to 30% improvement overall on everything. It's like everything about it. The bottom end is tighter. The whole mix is punchier. Now, I've just noticed this serious impact that these recalled mixes have over the original mix and I'm just sort of blown away and you know, I gotta talk about this. I mean, look at the effort that people put into remastering projects. You know, we have been in the digital age long enough now that this is a very real concept. Now, the only reason I'm even able to go back to that old TDM system and recall one of those mixes accurately is because I made the decision when I retired that system to leave it completely intact. This is something that I so strongly encourage anybody who's serious about this business and producing music long term. When it finally comes time to upgrade your system, yeah, don't just start stripping that system apart and rebuilding it. Leave that old system completely intact. I'm talking about all the licensing, the iLocks, everything about that system, leave it fully intact. You know, I'm in this process again. I'm in the middle of doing a really major upgrade. I plan on taking the next few months to get my new system really rocking and dialed in. But I promise you that the system that I've been working exclusively on for the last like seven years, there's no way I'm going to take that thing apart in any way. I'm going to leave that old computer exactly as it has been set up for the last seven years so that at any time I can go back and open up any track that I've worked on. You know, some of you can probably relate to this, but as producers, we spend so many hours in the studio all by ourselves, right? Working on tracks and coming up with ideas and mixing and whatever it is we're getting up to in the studio. It's not uncommon for me to get so excited about something late at night, like I did last night, to literally start jumping up and down. Well, last night's discovery was just, I was so excited because I've been wanting to share some production ideas from some of my favorite remixes that I've gotten up to over the years. So yesterday I went into the tape vault and I dug deep into the archives looking for a very specific remix that I did 19 years ago. Well, guess what? I found it on compact disc, okay? You know, 20 years ago, one of the only affordable ways to back up a project was on compact disc. You just burn discs, right? These things are capable of like 650 megabytes. So the particular song that I was looking for is spanned across 12 CDs. So as soon as I found this track in these discs, I got so excited. I grabbed my Apple Super Drive and I brought it into the control room and I loaded the first disc and I started transferring it over to a hard drive. Well, it didn't make it three quarters of the way through that transfer before it just stopped copying and the disc just sat there and spun. So I aborted that one and I tried like five other discs from that collection. None of them were readable. So yeah, all the blood sort of drained from my face for an instant and I was just like, oh, this is my only backup of this thing. Well, this just speaks clearly into why you need to keep those old systems intact. Well, I simply just grabbed this spindle of discs and I sat down on my old G5, my, my TDM rig that I'm talking about, Sure enough, no problem reading all of those discs. I was able to restore the entire session to a new hard drive using that old disc reader in that G5. So yeah, there's no question, it's a major overhaul to build a new system from scratch and to 
absolutely keep an old system intact, including all the licenses and everything. I sort of can't even begin to add up the benefits that I've gotten from keeping these systems intact. So the next time you're considering remastering a project from like 15 or 20 years ago that was mixed entirely inside the box, oh yeah, do your very best to go back to that original session and restore that multi-track to the very same form that it was in when you were mixing it back then, and then bring that session into a newly updated DAW and just simply play that exact same mix through the new system. The difference between those two mixes is not going to be subtle. It's absolutely going to blow your mind in a really good way.